Fallout is largely a series taking place in the post-apocalypse, wearing the influences of franchises like Mad Max on its sleeve. A common theme among the genre is improvisation in the name of survival, and that extends as much to set pieces as it does to weaponry. Can you beat Fallout New Vegas with only a lead pipe? I woke up in a daze, the blinding lights throwing DLC pop-ups in my face as I rose to greet the shrewd old doctor that had saved me from the brink of death. He asked for my name, which took my adult and sickened mind far more than it should have to decide on. I hurried the two of us to the vigor tester and put together a melee build. Not sure about my own decision to go with three points of perception, guess I wanted my enemy detection to be slightly less terrible than usual. Melee, unarmed, and medicine were my tag skills for obvious reasons. Skilled and heavy-handed were my traits to make up for the pipe's low critical chance multiplier and help raise my melee weapon skill up to the requirement as quickly as I could manage. Without a weapon in the meanwhile, I decided to use my guile and wit to my advantage to get some early experience in good springs. I talked to all of the NPCs, using small stat boosts from alcohol and skill magazines where necessary, and got the aid of Chet, Trudy, and Doc Mitchell. I let the militia and the gang duke it out, searched the corpses for a pipe, found nothing, and made a beeline for Prim. After a bit of nearly aimless wandering, absorbing the power of the sheriff, and a frankly embarrassing realization about where I was actually meaning to look, I finally found a guaranteed lead pipe on a skeleton in one of the houses south and west of the Bison Steve. Now armed and almost dangerous, I tore into the convicts one by one with my new toy. The pipe made plenty short work of the goons, but I came to figure out the greatest problem I'd be dealing with for the duration of the run. Repairs. I'd already decided that I'd signed with Caesar this run, as I'd not done so in a while, and that meant I'd not always be able to rely on Major Knight, my go-to when I don't have kits or replacements, for repairs. To that end, I made a mental note to put some much-needed focus on the skill to ensure I wouldn't need to do a lot of trekking around without killing anything. And that just makes bad content. Anyway, with that sorted, I wiped out the whole of the Bison Steve, save for Beagle, briefly considered murdering him, but then just pickpocketed his journal. Looking back, I don't know why I didn't just let him go without bothering or just killing him for the pittance of XP he was worth, but in any event, I talked to him and Nash before realizing I couldn't bring in the one true sheriff, Prim Slim, without a boost to science. To correct this, I stopped by the Good Spring Schoolhouse to pick up the Free Programmer's Digest as well as to open up the safe for some free goodies, including a stealth boy and Mentats. The Mentats ended up being good enough that I didn't need the Digest, so I used those instead just in case I might need a large boost to science later down the line for something I had planned. No need to worry about that now, though, so I backtracked to Good Springs again because I'd forgotten the cigarette butts Benny left for me to incriminate him with later. I decided to take the long route and follow the story path more or less as intended for a bit, just for extra items and encounters to help flesh my build out a little and make good content to sort through. I put down a couple thugs and mantises in the fuck you house on the road to Nipton and secured an extra lead pipe from one of the bodies. Stopping by the outpost for a quick repair for Major Knight, I picked up a couple quests to make the detour just a bit more worth my while and also stopped by Lacey over at the outpost's rest stop for a quick restock on stims and water. A few squished ants, one dead swanic, a preemptive taking of the cannibal perk, and a chat with Wolpus later, and I made sure to also complete Cold Cold Heart. May as well get my Legion Errand Boy tasks out early. I then stealth killed one of the NCR troops for their uniform in case I wanted to ride the monorail later, and then started hoofing it to Novak. I got more than distracted on the way, bartering with a roaming trader for a single stim pack and also thinning out the bighorner population for some sweet, sweet experience. On the trek, I also ended up hearing the sound of a door opening, same bug I think Nurbit ran into at some point in one of his videos. I ended up collecting myself and deliberately running over to the Snyder Prospector Camp, a location nearby a place I'd want to get to later. I took the bed and fireplace by route of conquest, ate the body to ensure I wasn't being wasteful, and then booked it to Novak. There I took some components for weapon repair kits to ensure my pipe wouldn't snap in two, then just read Manny's terminal for the note and got out of there. Didn't feel like messing with Boone since he'd probably be a bit cross with me by the end of the game. One Viper leader I ran into decided to murder his whole posse with a grenade rifle instead of giving me the honor, a crime he paid for with his life. He had some reinforced leather armor on him though, which I immediately donned to replace my own. I entered a conspicuously Kowalski-free boulder city and decided to just kill all the NCR by stealth to help out the cons. This got me enough XP to take Bloody Mess for the 5% damage bonus and extra hilarity, and also got another stipend of precious points when I headed into the building to inform the cons of a job well done. Jessup thanked me with more evidence of Benny's treachery, and I headed out for Vegas. 
I tried my luck with the Lake Lurks at Boulder Beach, and while they hit hard, I'm happy to say I was able to endure the fight and smash their puny fish skulls. I headed up to Camp McCarran and engaged in some good old-fashioned bounty hunting. I'd taken bloody mess, so it took me a few more quick loads than I'm proud of to get the heads intact, but I was able to take out Cook Cook and Violet without too much issue. Then I went out to go deal with Nephi, and the strangest thing happened. First, Victor popped up out of nowhere and spoke to me, and I used him to take out a couple of fiends with ranged weapons I didn't want to have to bother closing the distance to kill. Then, when the robot left, the goddamn NCR ranger that appears to give you the emergency radio barged in like a goddamn madman and ran in without a care in the world for his own safety. Turns out, he respawns immediately upon being killed by other NPCs, so he just kept slaughtering them of his own volition despite numerous deaths on his part. Using this once-in-a-lifetime demonstration of Kim in a non-Elder Scrolls title to my advantage, I found Nephi in the chaos and casually ruptured his vitals with my lead pipe to take both his drugs and his head. I then just watched as this infinitely respawning ranger tore through the entire fiend encampment and calmly accepted his radio, and then decided I couldn't let him live and shattered his skull as well. Donning a disguise to ensure I wouldn't be shot on sight after murdering one of their own, I went back to the camp to collect my reward, took Super Slam as my perk for level 8, and then located the monorail. Now on the strip, I tattled on Benny to swank, got my pipe into the casino, then just bludgeoned Benny in his personal guard until I didn't see anyone screaming anymore. I took the chip, immediately cut my way through the Lucky 38 to kill house, then made my way to Cobblewind Cove to see about getting the main quest on the road. I spoke to Caesar and cleared out the robots in the underground bunker. I did destroy the bunker, though I had to ensure the robots in the rooms of the power regulators were dead before I did so. I had to use some explosives to actually blow the regulators themselves up, which I see as using the weapons more like tools akin to Loyal's detonator. I reported back to Caesar, got orders to handle the boomers, and decided to go to get an upgrade to my arsenal. You see, there's a unique pipe in the sewers right in front of Camp McCarran, and with my newfound equipment I felt like I was more than capable of getting my hands on it. After locating Blind Luke for his key, I found the sealed sewers, fought my way through some ferals, picked up some combat armor, and finally looted my prize, the Humble Cudgel, a unique pipe with extra damage and durability compared to its generic counterpart. I made my exit, healed up, restocked, killed George, and made it to Nellis. I also picked up the Brotherhood mission holotape for later. At Nellis, I first went to go help Argyle and his patients. I had to go looking for a today's physician copy to heal the last patient, as my medicine skill was 10 points shy of the last guy. I'm glad I decided to check every doctor, though, as Ada Strauss and Novak were selling two doses of Turbo. I now have access to a secret weapon against the Brotherhood, giving me enough confidence to deal with them without piercing strike. All I have to do when an armored opponent is near is just huff some speed and fish for either a disarm or a knockdown. To that end, I wrapped up my work with Argyle's patients with a book I found at Doc Mitchell's, fixed some solar panels for Boomer Rep and XP, then slaughtered my way through the Brotherhood's bunker with reckless abandon before blowing their home sky high. Not gonna lie, I thought they'd be made of sterner stuff. Guess I'll have to wait for General Oliver and his elite troops in order to get the glorious showdown I was looking for. In the meanwhile, I took a detour to Black Mountain to kill Tabitha and a few centaurs for some substantial XP, waited inside to lose Agra from the Nightkin while I went and made hot pockets, and went to go cull the local Cazador population north of Good Springs to get their poison glands. Burned through my healing supplies, but replenishing them with the items and caps I'd been looting was no problem. With the glands in hand, I bolted over to Red Rock Canyon to go help Jack and Diane save Anders, and get the recipe I'd collected the Cazador poison glands for in the first place. The recipe for Turbo. It calls for turpentine, jet, rock flowers, and the glands in question. So with the hardest thing to secure out of the question, I decided to do the rest of the work the cons had for me. In carving a path through fiend territory, I got absolute whiplash when I saw that the goddamned NCR ranger from before had somehow taped his fucking head back together. This time I let him walk, content with the knowledge that I would lay waste to the rest of his homeland, and that his immortality would become a curse from either the ennui or abject suffering that would await him when the Legion crosses the Colorado. I exploded a few fiends on my way into Vault 3 and put on my con clothes to make the delivery. I may or may not have also squashed one fiend's head like a grape to steal or lead pipe for my own purposes, but that's neither here nor there. I completed the quest by teaching Jack the recipes, and then crafted a whopping six doses of turbo. Yeah, from here on out much of the game becomes pretty much trivial. I raised the bomber Pearl wanted me to, cleared out Vault 3 for the experience as well as the Dine and Dash perk, killed Motor Runner for my own amusement, and then ransacked a few areas for a bit more turpentine to craft more turbo with later. With the boomers on my side, it was time to report back to Caesar, watch him scream in agony for a bit, took a quest from Volpez, changed reality about my will so he would look more like his playing card illustration, 
and took the quest from him about securing an informant for the Frumentari. I used my pipe to turn off a group of Omertas and turned in the quest. I also got the Legion version of I Put a Spell on You before heading over to both help the Legion spy and forge an alliance between the White Gloves and the Legion. I spoke to Curtis, planted some kush in some idiot's locker, exploded the idiot it belonged to with a single blow, scraped the paste off the curb to put in my mouth, and told Colonel Shu the monorail was his doing, and completed the quest. I went to go grab some stuff from the Legion drop box near the cove before heading back to the strip and entering the Ultralux. I attacked the greeter, immediately put my weapons away to de-aggro them, dropped my pipe on the floor, and turned my weapons in. This let me just casually carry my pipe around and into the kitchen, while I murdered Ted for Mortimer's purposes, then framed his father for the crime. I also ate said father in front of the whole casino. Guess they just took me for a member of the society at that point. I waved my stately dignity in Marjorie's face and left to go kill a few more Cazadors and head over to Camp Forlorn Hope and Nelson. I felt I could help the Legion a bit more, so I took out much of the camp's leadership for Dead Sea, then went back to Seizure to watch him have a Caesar. Wait, I decided to help the Khans leave to spare them the Legion's wrath while I waited for Caesar to recover, and let me turn in the quest where he killed the Brotherhood. So I went to go find Melissa to see if she needed anything, and then after a few too many Deathclaw sodomies, I remembered something. After you complete We Are Legion for Dead Sea, you can go talk to Papa Khan again and he'll name you his successor. Just killing him and then talking to Regis lets you decide the fate of the Khans there and then. They killed Carl. I ate him so I could just tell Caesar I was hungry at the time. Then I went back to go turn in the quest, do some brain surgery, take another detour at Caesar's behest to eat the president, and then go to the Legate's camp. My instincts told me to start swinging the pipe around, but I stayed my hand, knowing that for once these formidable fighters were on my side. Linnaeus spoke to me, and I agreed to go beat down Oliver and his goons. Our advance was quick and measured, with me making it a point to unlock the intake tunnels and eviscerate the snipers on top of the towers. With the super slam and piercing strike perks, I made short work of virtually everyone I came across up until I reached Oliver's compound. I jumped over a number of the traps and beat down some of the troopers before somehow catching up to Oliver before he could get to his post. The cheating fuck teleported away and I was left with a fight on my hands. I leapt over the bear traps to cripple and disorient some of the heavier targets and eventually made it to the compound's top floor. I hotkeyed my turbo and picked apart the heavy troopers in my way before managing to blast Oliver into bloody chunks with one power attack. I then had to play a brief game of cat and mouse with one final ranger before eventually managing to tenderize him into an early grave. I then exited the compound, spoke to Linnaeus, and I beat Fallout New Vegas with only a lead pipe. This run was a pretty entertaining romp. I'd suggest to other people trying this to tag repair from the outset. Definitely, definitely go out of your way to do so after you get like a 50 in melee weapons for a while. You want it high enough to get like a lot out of weapon repair kits, including the ones you get at the start, since you're not guaranteed to find a lot before you get jury rigging. Besides that, it's your standard melee-oriented playthrough. Just get your hands on some powerful chems and hack away at anything that moves. All that said, I hope you all had as much fun watching and listening as I did playing, and I hope to make more videos like this whenever I'm able. Ciao, ciao!